Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. In this video, it's going to be a talking head of me talking uh, about the reflection of 2022 running a, a side hustle or IT consulting business uh, and what our failures were as well as the learnings that, that came out of it. Now that we are a two-person business here, one uh, with my business partner, which is my wife. She runs the operations and for me i run the consulting side where i'm kind of the technical person the lead who interfaces with most of the clients and so uh for the failures that we i'll just dive into it the failures that we ran into here uh, and, and you know why don't i st take a step back and talk about failures for a side hustle right yeah for one it's a side hustle it's not my full-time job so when I talk about failures, these aren't uh, failures in a way where it was catastrophic. Now, they're not failures where it absolutely crippled the business. Right? The, these are failures where uh, we set certain goals and we didn't meet them. And for 2022, we went with, uh, instead of just writing down goals for the year, beginning of uh, the year that in January, we actually started something called OKRs or objectives and key results, something new for us to try out. But what, what the purpose of that was is to really define where we want to be this point in time in December of the year. Now we, we had about 10 OKRs and we only met 30% of them. So for me, that would be defined as a failure, right? Or, or anyone would look at that and go, oh, you only met three out of the 10 OKRs that you, you, you set out to achieve. That's a complete failure. It didn't work out. But uh, the, the biggest OKR that we had there was to meet an $800,000 revenue target. Now that for a side hustle, that's a huge target. We've never made 800000 before, but that was the biggest OKR that we did not meet in 2022. We ended up, we're ending up to be around 640000 somewhere around that number. Uh, we just had an invoice get paid just uh, a few days ago, and that, that really helped to bump us up, but it, it's, it wasn't our highest target but I will say that hitting $640,000 is not something that you should say is a complete failure. We're actually really happy where we're at being able to make that much revenue for a side hustle. And it's actually $40,000 higher than in 2021 as we try to um, recover from post-pandemic uh, days and 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 having clients come back to to actually do some work we actually were able to acquire about um i'd say around eight to ten new clients this year so i wouldn't say it's a complete failure for 2022 not being able to meet some of those objectives but you know, we, we set certain targets out there uh, for this example of 800000 as a revenue target. It can be difficult to hit or challenging to hit even for a small side hustle like ours where, where I cannot dedicate 100% of my time to doing a lot of this work. Right? So where we failed at that, where, where I think we failed in trying to hit some of these OKRs was around some of the processes that we don't have in place and uh, some of the, the delegation and, and execution. All right, so uh, that, that's one of the, the failures. The other failure that I felt uh, that I had was traveling too much, right? When, when I traveled, uh, for the side hustle, trying to go on site for a lot of our clients. And a lot of our clients are, are uh, spread throughout the United States. Uh, traveling really puts a strain on the body. 
it actually puts a strain on the family as well because I'm not there to, to, to be with the kids, to be with my wife. And so traveling um, usually means taking vacation days for, for, for my full-time employment and also possibly traveling on weekends. And traveling I want to limit for, for the next year because I want to spend more time, uh, for example, at my son's baseball games. Uh, I don't want to miss any of those. Uh, I want to be able to put my daughter in some sort of activity for the next year. And that means I need to be present. I need to be there with the family and, and really not be on an airplane as much. Uh, I, I would say uh, last year I was I was very proud of my uh, airline loyalty status. But this year uh, I really have to set that aside. I, I was probably one tier, a few thousand dollars away from being the top tier, but uh, I, I'm not trying to pursue that anymore. And it, and it really leads to the, the, the next failure that I want to talk about, which is my health. And, and being, having to travel and not focus on the foods uh, that I should be eating, uh, I was really, really eating unhealthy uh, consuming a little too much alcohol. Uh, I wasn't getting the right amount of sleep. Uh, it's still very inconsistent. So my goal is to hit about eight hours of sleep every night, which means sleeping in early, but then I wake up a little bit earlier during the day to knock out some some other things and tasks. And, and so a lot of this has to do with... Uh, not meeting certain objectives. So by traveling too much, I was that, that really dedicated a lot of time to just that one particular client that I'm tra uh, traveling to. And it took away time for other things that I could have been working on, right? So uh, there, there's things like the podcast that we run, uh, Clear to Send, with my co-host Francois. So I need to dedicate time to that as well. And, and when I did travel... There was extra money spent on on hotels, on on car rentals or, or Uber rides, and and really just saw that decline in my health. I, I had to make extra visits to the doctor, do some blood tests, and find out, hey, there's I need to change my lifestyle in order to uh, be healthier. And by being healthier, I would have more energy and be more focused to do a lot of these different tasks that I need to complete for the business. And so those, those were the really the top three failures for 2022. Talk about setting these objectives and key results. Uh, and the reason for setting objectives and key results is really just to have something measurable. Uh, I know setting a goal is great. And I think writing that down and, and putting it out there, uh, create some sort of accountability. And as a, a if you also share that with other people, that's even better, right? So that's why I'm pretty transparent with, with the goals that we have or the OKRs. The OKRs are a lot more specific. So I have an objective that could be, uh, for example, trying to meet this 800,000 revenue target. But beneath that, I have key results. Like what are those results to, to meet those objectives? And then from those um, key results, you have these projects that meet to complete those key results, which then meet the objectives. And so I track all of that within Notion. And I think uh, what really helped a lot for this year was using Notion as a way to organize all the projects, the strategy, ideas, some knowledge base articles that I create for myself and as well as documenting these OKRs. And, and I'm still trying to optimize Notion and so where, where it makes a lot of sense. And I think I've really gained traction with it uh, for this fourth quarter here. But uh, for OKRs next year, we're really going to try to refine that, um, try to reach something that's a little bit more um, uh, bigger but, you know, if I don't meet those OKRs, I'm still in a good place, right? I, I am happy where 
where we're currently at, um, where the business is at, but it could be better. And for next year, it's really going to be focusing on, on my health and lifestyle uh, rather than having the business dictate how my health and lifestyle should be. Uh, so if I dive into then the lessons that, that I picked up from this year, uh, getting help or delegating is really the biggest lesson here. I, I think I've written about that almost every week. I know every month I've written about getting help, trying to find uh, someone to delegate some work to that, that I cannot do. And we did this with the podcast at Clear to Send, where uh, previously we were, me and, and, and my co hosts were doing a lot of the post production. So, editing of audio, putting together the video, making sure things synced, doing editing. And that took up a lot of time. Now, the podcast uh, generally does not make uh, enough money to pay ourselves uh, some sort of salary for our time and the efforts we put into a lot of research for an episode and, and the production. Uh, this year, that kind of changed. Uh, I think uh, getting the help, uh, we, we hired a podcast producer and he's done a phenomenal job. His name is Mark. He, he, what we do is we organize everything in Notion again, all the episodes that we create, we record, we send that, the, the, the audio and video to Mark. He does all the editing the way we would like to have it done. And, and then he publishes it for us. That saved us countless hours every week from, from having to do that. That's not even our expertise, right? Those are things that I picked up along the way, uh, trying to learn how to edit, cut video, put it all together. And, and that also saved us money as well because now we don't have this extra software that, uh, or subscription that we need to hold on to in order to do those edits. I want to apply that same uh, delegation and getting help that we did on the podcast, but also apply it to the business uh, at Packet 6. Uh, right now, I'm currently the only technical engineer. Uh, sometimes I do get some help from other consultants to help with uh, their troubleshooting, doing some Wi-Fi validation surveys, that kind of thing. Um, but what, what I need to look for is someone that I could rely on and, and work with to be part of the team in order to, to off, uh, offload some of the work that I have. And, and rather than working on uh, in the business, where the business is, is really driving me to certain clients and the types of work, I should be working on the business, working more on strategy and execution that kind of thing, right? And, and then I can help develop some of the skills of this other engineer. So hopefully we can try to bring someone on to our team. Either that could be another consultant on a contract basis. We could look for someone that is maybe just part-time. Um, we're, we're thinking about some, uh, how we can hire someone full-time. We have different options but I think we need to be very strategic in, in how we do this as a small business. So we need to scale up, but we want to take very small baby steps in, in doing that. And what that could eventually do is increase our revenue. Maybe we could meet our $800,000 revenue target, but for, I know for next year, the revenue target is not going to be, actually, it, may, it, may, it might be 800000 again. But I, I do know that uh, after we get help, um, we will be looking at other targets as well, like net income, for example. Revenue is great, but after taxes and expenses, uh, everything boils down to the, the income that you bring in after all of that, right? And so getting help and delegating is the biggest lesson learned. Uh, it's, it's definitely been helpful whenever I brought in somebody else to to help with the work now the other lesson i've learned is to uh, really absorb the the content that i consume and learn from a lot of this comes from books right there there were a lot of times this year where i 
just needed to learn something in order to get to the next step. So a lot of just-in-time learning. Uh, I read about, I don't know, 18 books this year, both nonfiction and, and, and fiction, and also some technical books as well. Now, the, the lesson that I've learned there after going through that many books is really sitting back and absorbing that material and really thinking about how you could um, strategically implement what you've taken from the book and, and, and then put that into the business and really test and verify some of those actions, right? I think what I did was spend, um, went quickly between books. And a lot of times I, I go between Audible and listening to those books. It, it especially helped with travel. I also uh, read the paper books. I have um, I have a bookshelf here to my left, and I have a smaller bookshelf here to my right, where um, I have certain books that I want to read, but I don't really sit down to take notes. Um, I think sometimes I do on a, on a notepad or in Notion, but really sitting down and thinking about what I just read and how that can help us. Uh, move forward with this business and, and meet some of our OKRs. Now, the, the last lesson that I learned is to really get some rest, right? I mentioned getting about eight hours of sleep. I think I average around five to six hours. Um, I laugh at that because I know I should be getting more rest, but uh, I, I'm actually waiting on um, getting an aura ring. I just ordered, ordered one to track my sleep, um, I don't know, I, being a technical person, I just like gathering a bunch of data. Like I know what I need to do and, and I know that data could be helpful, but it, it's really not necessary. I just need to go to sleep early, right? Uh, don't stay up so late. Don't wake up so early. Get, get a seven, eight hour amount of sleep. And, I, and that's important for me um, in this new year because of the energy that I need to have in order to be very productive, in order to execute uh, properly, make better decisions. And I know looking back at this year, there's been a lot of times where I've been um, pretty stressful. And, and that's because of lack of energy. In addition to that, it, um, I, I was having back-to-back -back meetings a lot. Uh, also working late quite often. I think this quarter, I, I can't even count the number of times where I sat here at this desk for an extended amount of time. And this is after my, my, my day job, trying to upgrade some firewalls or trying to migrate a network to, uh, because all of that has to be done after hours. So a lot of that means just sitting back, resting, and also one, one thing that's pretty big is just having time to think. Think about what has transpired. Think about um, what went right, what, what didn't go well, and also just thinking about the business. I, I think I need time to sit back. I have a notepad here where um, I should be writing down where, where I want that where I want the business to be, where I want to be, uh, what I want to focus on. And I'm not talking about just the business at all, but where I want to be personally and professionally. And I think having time dedicated every week to just sit there and think about life in general is, is really good rather than going through the motions of, you know, let me do this one task and then move on to the next one without stopping to think what did, what happened with that one task, what went well, and how can I improve and do better the next time? And so th those were really the key lessons that I wanted to take away from, from this year. So aside from that, 2022 was, was very successful in my opinion. Um, and this is me taking the time to really think about uh, how this year went, how the the side hustle went. And and really I got like three things that three pillars that I work on, right? So 
there's the the business packet six there's clear to send the podcast and also my um, my website that that i handle my personal website and and really my objective here is running this um basically a business with multiple income streams because the it's just something that i'm really interested in i think even before um many years back i even had another business not even related to it but wedding photography i i, I just have this um entrepreneurial itch in me right so i'm i'm working on three different pillars maybe one two too many <laughs> but uh for me it's the consistency and execution that i really need to work on and what we'll see in in 2023 and and th this video is kind of showing even on the on the video side where i mean I, my last video was back in august this year so uh, I'm, I'm looking to be more consistent, uh, be more uh, involved in planning and, and really focusing down on, on all the tasks I have at hand, right? And I keep track of all, all of that in Notion. Maybe I'll share some of that in, in future videos as well as how I, how I organize it. But those, uh, that, that was my recap of 2022. Just want to say goodbye to this year and looking forward to 2023 but uh let me know what you guys um what you guys think down in the comments below about failures and learning from those failures and what what your experience might have have been running side hustles for or, or it consulting and if you have any questions about it consulting in general go ahead and leave those comments down below as well but I want to thank you guys for watching and you guys have a happy new year.